Let's have the conversation, man. Let's talk about the state of the game, the state of Marvel Contest of Champions as of September 2021. I love this game, man. You know, especially doing the new account challenge and stuff like that, coming in uh, from a not exactly new player perspective, but just starting the game fresh. Dude, so much fun. But as I return to my main account here, I, I was just very quickly reminded of all the issues that this game has had and issues that have plagued the game for years, honestly, and kind of just waiting for Kabam to, you know, fix some of these issues that just seems like they're, they're, they're not being fixed. So that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Um, I even put the message out on Twitter asking for your guys' take on it. Said, question for everyone. Working on a state of the game kind of video that'll be posted in a couple days. The question for all is, what is one thing you would change, add, or remove an MCOC that would make the game more fun slash interesting to you, excluding bugs? So we're going to get into all that. There was actually over 200 replies. So, man, thank you, everyone, for adding your input to it. Uh, I know for a fact that Kabam did see the tweet and the replies and everything like that, too. But I've even organized, like, a like a top 10 most requested uh, feature or change uh, kind of list that we're going to go through at the end of the video, uh, along with just a bunch of other comments and you know that I included. But we'll get to that towards the end of the video. First, I kind of want to paint in a little bit of broader strokes here and go over some of the issues that I feel like have been, um, you know, causing people to, to lose interest in MCOC as time goes on. Uh, and I might as well just get the, the, the whole bug thing out of the way first. Um, I mean, the reason why I put this in the tweet is because if I did not then half of the responses would have just been fix the bugs. Um, <laughs> bugs suck, man. Nobody wants to deal with the bugs. Uh, I can't say that they're affecting me that much. It seems like it, it depends on the device that you're on and to some extent the, the champions that you're playing with or playing against. Um, I, I, you know, with the champs that I normally play, I don't normally experience the issues, but I, you know, when I play certain champs like, um, Bishop or when I play up against champs like Hulkbuster, I tend to notice the bugs a bit more. And of all my deaths that happened in Alliance War this season, I can confidently say that none of them were due to the bugs. They were all due to me, but, uh, still it's. It's that lack of confidence that we have in the game that it is responding the way that it should be. And then you second guess yourself like, oh man, did I, did I mess up or, or was that on the game? You know, a lot of you that have watched the channel for a while know that I was a pretty big fan of, uh, you know, Blizzard Entertainment. This is all, you know, long before the controversy and really the last 10 or so years, they haven't really put out... Uh, Good games, in my opinion. But back in the day, man, Diablo 2, favorite game of all time. Was a big fan of World of Warcraft and the uh, the, uh, the the old versions of it, at least. Um, and one of the things that I still think of when I think of games in general is just one of their mottos, which was, control is king. And I still uh, totally agree with that, where just the control that we have over a game. It's, it's you know, a game... It's really like an extension of ourselves. It's, it's, we, we're feeling it, right? That's what we actually feel. You know, it's it's nice that the game looks good and everything, but all that, for me anyway, it's just a bonus. So to not have the game feel as responsive as it should, yeah, it, it definitely does matter, even if it's not, you know, ending up getting me me killed or it's, it's, it's really not costing me resources. Again, your experience may vary depending on the device you're on and stuff like that, so... Um, for some people out there, it's going to be a far worse experience too, which sucks. Um, I will say on a positive note, I do think that Kabam is at least handling the situation appropriately with the compensation and, and stuff like that. Um, and there are some bugs that are benefiting players. I, I don't know if you guys even realize at this point, but there's been bugs in AQ for literally months now that has caused AQ to be free. It's, it's not costing any tickets. I still recommend buying the tickets because eventually I'm sure Kabam's going to, you know, start charging for that again. But, hey, man, we've we've had free AQ for months. So um, it's one of the few positive things that I'm really going to say in this video because 
Well, if you didn't, if you didn't already know, state of the game videos usually bringing up a bunch of the stuff that's that's not really good. Nobody makes a state of the game video that's like, hey, everything's groovy, man. Carry on. Now, let's 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 let's, let's move on to the next subject because, like I said, there's not much to say about bugs. They suck. Kabam needs to fix them. They know they need to fix them. Uh, apparently, it's not that easy to fix. And yeah, as long as they continue giving out some freebies until the issues are resolved. I mean, what, what more can you really ask for? The next thing that I want to talk about is the rampant cheating in MCOC. So we recently got a couple of messages at the top of the screen there. These messages came in a few days ago saying, warning against the use of third-party software and warning account sharing. These messages are leading a lot of people to believe that Kabam is going to clean up the contest, issuing a massive ban wave. And I'm hopeful of that too. I would love nothing more. But my confidence that that is going to happen is pretty low, to be totally honest with you guys. It's it's very low, in fact. Seeing how long it took to, you know, try to determine who was cheating and who was not cheating for the Legends leaderboard. And, you know, we look at something like the Alliance War season where it just ended and we've got, you know, a few hours before the rewards are going to pay out. I just don't see it happening and that does so much damage to the game now fortunately this is somewhat reversible damage kabam just needs to you know actually clean up the contest actually rid the game of these cheaters and then be like hey everything's great but until that happens Players are going to continue to lose interest in competitive game modes because who wants to who like there's like alliance wars the rewards for it are great fantastic but to be honest with you guys when looking between some of these reward brackets i don't necessarily have that big of a care of of, of where we place uh as an alliance it's more of like a like a pride thing of like oh yeah man you know we were in the top three or top 10 or top 20 um plat one like wherever you are in the game just you know trying to ascend to that next level it's a pride thing in addition to the rewards of course because let's face it we all want the rewards but it's largely a pride thing but when you're playing a game and you suspect that others are cheating and you don't see anyone being banned especially in you know recent seasons here there, at least there was a point in time where, you know, band waves were going out, alliances were, were getting docked every single season, and then that just stopped. It's not like alliances have stopped cheating, and the longer that time goes on without those things happening, the more inclined people are to cheat. And it just, it, it, it kills any sort of desire to truly be competitive in a mode uh, with with cheaters in it. I'm not here to call anyone out. I have no clue if we went up against alliances that cheated this season or what, but I would bet every last dollar, every last can of beans that I own that uh, the Alliance War uh, leaderboard, it's, it's, it's not clean, you know? And like I said, it'll never be 100% clean, but yeah, there's been so much time that's passed without any sort of repercussions um, for these cheaters and people are just every day more inclined to actually cheat um, then we have uh, something like the arena where man the arena it arguably has the absolute best rewards in the entire game because you can actually target and acquire whatever six star champion is in that arena there's there's nothing like this anywhere else in the game looking at the everest content right now is the abyss that is the king piece of content in the game still. Even though it's a little bit old, a lot of people have gone through it, it is still top piece of content. And even that piece of content, it only gives you a you know an abyss nexus, which is fantastic, but you're still not guaranteed to get the champion you want. Whereas, dude, if you want Kitty Pride, who seems pretty OP to me, you can get Kitty Pride. You got to work your ass off for it. You may have to, you know, spend a bunch of units or money to get the units and refresh your champions, but you can actually get the champ you want. But a lot of people know that they're going up against cheaters, going up against people that are account sharing or using bots. 
and just don't want any part of that. The score is out of control, um, partially due to that. It's The score is, they would be high regardless, even if there weren't any sort of cheaters uh, in the arena, just because, like I said, this is the best rewards in the game. But the cheaters have driven up those scores, and it just feels bad to even compete against people that are cheating. Um, and if, man... There are people that still brave the arenas anyway, go up against those cheaters, and have unfortunately missed out on getting the prize because of those cheaters, and it's a miracle that they still play the game. Some people have quit over stuff like that, but honestly, man, for the people that haven't, it's a miracle that they're still playing the game. So, man, like, there's... These are end game activities, too. That's the thing is you look at something like Alliance Wars and you look at something like the six-star featured arena, these are some things for the absolute end game players to do with the, the, the biggest, best rosters, a way to uh, you know actually flex all of the, the work that you've put into this game and everything that you've built up until this point. And two of these modes are just filled with cheaters, making people not want to play those modes. So then what are you left with? You're left with AQ, which is pretty monotonous. I don't really have too many issues with Alliance Quest, to be honest. It's it's a pretty monotonous game mode, but I, I kind of like that it has that stability where it's just, hey, you know you log in, you do some fights, doesn't even take that long, you get some good rewards for it, and, uh, you know, you work on your prestige over time. AQ doesn't really bother me, but it's not the main draw of the game. It's AQ is, is almost like a background game mode, uh, in my opinion. Whereas I would rather focus on, you know, obtaining new champions or, you know, trying to do better in Alliance War, things like that. That's what I like to put my focus on. And right now, due to the cheating, it's hard to have fun putting focus on those things. The next thing I want to talk about is just the overall stale feeling that the contest has to it. You know, over the last year or so, we've gotten some really great changes, some fantastic changes that I'm so damn appreciative of, man. Changes like removing linked nodes, easing up on the energy timers, the persistent sorting in the arenas, being able to sell items from the overflow stash. Dude, all these changes, they're fantastic. But at the end of the day, there are quality of life changes that, while they make playing the game feel a little bit better, it's not refreshing the actual game modes the actual game itself has felt the same for years at this point i'm going to go through some of the areas of the game that i feel like have suffered um the most <sighs> man I I'm, I'm not even going to go through every area of the game but i am going to go through a few and we might as well start with alliance wars since i was already talking about war when it came to cheating so let me let's take a look at the the roadmaps here this is the original roadmap for uh, Alliance Wars, the future of Alliance Wars. And I'm going to reread half of this, this post here because it's still a fantastic post. If Kabam actually delivered on what they talked about here, uh, it would be fantastic for the game. But here's what you need to understand before we even you know read this post again. This post came out after Alliance Wars like after players were already complaining about Alliance Wars for, you know, a year, two years, um, maybe even longer than that. I, I don't remember how long players had been frustrated with wars. And the changes that we were getting were just changes that <sighs> players didn't really want, like defensive tactics. Defensive tactics, I don't know, maybe they would possibly work if Alliance Wars itself uh, if the other issues were, were addressed, if, if, if the other issues, like if, if the game mode itself um, was just better as a whole, maybe defensive tactics could actually work. But just to be thrown on top of this mode that already had all these issues, it didn't help. And as much as players would keep telling Kabam, like, no, man, this is, this is not what players want. This is not enough. This is, this is no good. Kabam kept trying to, to force that, like, no, man, all right, well, okay, you didn't like these defensive tactics. <laughs> Just wait until we show you this other set of defensive tactics. That'll, that'll make it all better. So finally, Kabam came out with this post. And again, this is over a year ago uh, at this point, but this is 
uh, well into the complaints that, that players are already having. It says, We've received a lot of feedback from our community in regards to the Alliance Wars player experience. The development team agrees that the current format of Alliance Wars does not live up to what an Alliance versus Alliance mode should be in our game. We are fully committed to taking Alliance Wars back to the drawing board and redesigning the feature from the ground up. Dude, when I read this, I was so excited, man. I was so excited because it finally felt like Kabam was listening. All this time, all this feedback that players were giving about wars, it felt like it was just, oh, okay, we hear you. Here's another defensive tactic. And then finally, we get this post that they're going to commit to redesigning the mode from the ground up. One of the core game modes in MCOC. One of the modes that, that keeps endgame players interested. The most dedicated players to the game actually interested in continuing to play MCOC. Finally! So as the seasons go by, you know, I don't think any players were, were really expecting a change that was going to happen in like the, the next couple of seasons uh, after this post came out. But eventually, season after season, players get tired of waiting. Uh, maybe they're going to have some info this next season. No, no, absolutely not. Finally, we get hit with an update that they're going to add attack tactics to the defensive tactics. And it's like we're right back to step one where it's just keep trying to, you know, push this, this, this one area of the game mode that players didn't really want to see pushed. And it's like, okay, what happened to this post where you guys listened, you guys agreed, you committed to uh, the, the redesign. It just didn't happen. <sighs> Like, all the confidence was just completely washed away. And more and more players walk away from the game each day. You see Alliance mates leave. You see YouTubers lose interest in, in making content for the game. And still just feels like nothing is actually happening. Now, I'm sure Kabam is working hard behind the scenes on this stuff. And, hey, maybe we are close to actually getting these updates. I don't know. But the state of the game, as of September 14th, 2021, is just that it feels incredibly stale. And it feels like we are not going to get those promised changes. A lot of the changes that happened over the last year or so... It feels like Kabam has just tried to do what they can, like a like a last minute scramble of oh, crap, man. People are not happy with the game. So what what can we do? Um, what can we do that can that can you know quickly uh, make the game feel a little bit better? And I, and I say quickly, you know, relative to something like a complete overhaul, because of course even some of these you know quicker quality of life changes they still take uh, you know a lot of time and effort to do, and I understand that. But that's what it feels like. It feels like there's just these deadlines that, you know, it's like a sinking ship that they're just trying to get some kind of changes into the game, even if it's not the changes that players necessarily uh, want to see always. And then it doesn't help the fact that, you know, again, we look at other areas of the game and I get that same feeling like it's, it's just... It's just like the like the devs are, are drowning and just trying to get out whatever update they can because they're they're stuck to this this deadline of getting out some kind of content on a regular basis some kind of content you know every single month and as a youtuber dude i get that <laughs> i would i would love to have more time to be able to put you know you know higher quality videos out and stuff like that but hey some content is better than no content gotta get something out there so i don't I'm not necessarily blaming any individual devs at Kabam as I look at some of these lacking areas of the game. So, man, if those devs are watching, please don't take this personally. It's just Kabam as a whole, as a company, as a studio, has to figure out some kind of way to get out higher quality changes, changes that do make the game feel fresh. Like, let's, let's take a look at the side quests. Now, this, man, like, dude, when I played, the, like, the new account challenge, the, the, the Finkeldink uh, account for a week, man, I was loving this game all over again. And what actually snapped me back to just feeling 
just, you know, not great about the game was this side quest here. Let me explain. Some of the side quest objectives that we've gotten recently, it doesn't even feel like a game. Like, I have to double check the App Store to make sure I didn't download Marvel Contest of Workbooks, because that's what it feels like. It feels like I'm just being handed some busy work to do. It feels like it's one step above the tutorial when I first downloaded this game. You know, when you first download the game and they're like, hey, tap the left side of your screen, that's how you block. Now tap the right side of your screen, that's how you do a light attack. And then we get hit with these objectives where it's really does feel like it's just one step above that where they're like use a skill champion that's the class type in red now do light attacks and defeat 10 opponents with those light attacks dude been playing the game for nearly six years the game's been out for nearly seven years and that's what that's what we're getting for a special objective i would understand if the game had just came out you know players have been playing for uh uh, you know, maybe maybe like the very first round of objectives that we got or something like that. Like, because I'll even say Karina's Challenges. Karina's Challenges, I actually love them. They're they're not like the 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 you know most insane challenges ever. They they are just some kind of simple things. Go through Labyrinth of Legends with a four star. It's not it's not super exciting, but because it's the first round of these challenges, I feel like gets a pass. Uh, it was a good addition to the game, and I hope that we don't see as many, hey, just hop in Labyrinth with a low star level champ for the next round of challenges, but it was still a good addition to the game. The, the special event quest, the, like the side quest objectives here, dude, we're, we're too long into the development of this game to be getting hit with stuff like this. Maybe roll this out as like the, like the summoner's journey. To, as an extension of the tutorial, fine. But don't put that in the, the, the special side quest objectives for players that have been playing the game for years and years and years at this point. It's not good enough to keep players engaged in the game. So, you know, you've got the, the long-form game modes like Alliance War and Alliance Quest that don't really see much for changes. And then we have the temporary content that it feels like one step above the tutorial and you start to wonder like why am i playing this game over another game on a positive note i will say that the summer of pain was an absolutely phenomenal event you know when the summer of pain first started and we saw the individual fights and the formats and things like that i was like all right this is this is kind of cool i'll give this like a like a seven out of ten and then we saw the special objectives start to roll out for those individual fights. And I was like, oh man, even better, dude. I'll give this like an 8 out of 10. This is, this is, this is pretty cool. And then the finale hit. And dude, I loved the way that it was set up. It was set up in such a way that like you actually had to strategize over it if you wanted to complete all the objectives. Because there was special objectives to complete... Uh, a path with with each of the class types now if you wanted to you could run the same path over and over just with each of the class types but if you wanted to try to be more efficient about it you could also just try to run all of the six different class types on the map uh one time but of course each with a different class type so now you're thinking like man do i want to use my mutant champs on this path or on this path if i use them on this path then where am i going to use my tech champions and things like that phenomenal event loved it 10 out of 10 when I saw the finale of it. So, like, that's that's why this game, I like, that's why I continue to play this game, is because I, as much as there are some of these lower quality events and activities to do in the game right now, this game has so much potential to it. So, really, if you want to know what keeps me going, like, that, that's what keeps me going, is that potential. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, what keeps you going is that you have a YouTube channel about this game. I could I could make YouTube videos for other games, man. There's other games out there. Uh, there's a lot of other games that usually pull in more views than MCOC just as a whole. So, yeah, the if I don't want to keep playing this game, I don't have to. I play the game because I like it. I play the game because it's fun, you know, collecting and growing our rosters and progressing and things like that. <sighs> But here's the thing about that progression. The progression, this is the next subject that I really want to put a heavy emphasis on, a heavy focus on, is the progression feels like it has slowed to a crawl. You know what? 
before we even continue this talk about progression, like, let me just, let me just ask you guys a question. How important do you feel progression is overall in MCOC for you, just your overall enjoyment of the game? Like, if you took progression out of it and you were just given every single champion, they were at max rank, and hey, just you, you still can do the quests, you can still participate in Alliance War, but you have everything. Do you think MCOC holds up as a game? If we drilled it down to just the actual one-on-one -on -one fighting experience, would you think that, that MCOC could compete with the, the most well-known fighters? I'm talking about the Street Fighters and Mortal Kombat and Smash Bros. of the world. Do you think MCOC holds up side-by-side -side with those titles? For me, it's the progression that makes this game. It's collecting these champions, deciding on who to rank up. Like, one of the reasons why I fell in love with this game in the first place is because it does ask you to make these very difficult decisions. Who do you want to rank? Do you have a champion right now that you want to rank up? Or do you want to wait to get that other champion that you got your eyes on that uh, you think is going to be a little bit better, a little bit more helpful to you? Dude, I, I, I love that, man. The progression, the decision-making, our involvement in that progression. But it feels like it's slowed down to such a crawl that it's been difficult to enjoy that side of the game. The most important side of the game. Feels like it's been difficult to enjoy it for a few years now. Ever since Six Star Champions have been released, it's been difficult to enjoy it. I'm going to mention one of the reasons being Sig Stones still. And I hate to talk about this because it feels like I'm just having the same conversation over and over again. And you know what, man? Even though I'm talking to you guys out there, I'm just sitting here in a room and just saying the same thing over and over again in a room with a camera pointed at me. Like, I, I we, there's, we've got a lot of events that have Sig Stones in them this year. But even then, even with this greater increased flow of Sig Stones, it's still so hard to actually, you know, feed these six stones and, and, and rank up and progress my six star roster in comparison to my five star roster. You know, I, I look at champions like Angela here, who uh, I, I can't actually feed six stones into because I, I at least want to get a baseline of five champs at SIG 200, uh, you know, for, for prestige reasons. And I have not been able to do that yet. Even after I complete Karina's challenge, which I'm probably going to do tomorrow, to be honest. Uh, even after completing that, I'm still not going to have a set of five champions at SIG 200. Six star champs have been out for, what, like three and a half years now? And I'm talking about getting five champions up to SIG 200. And this is, again, the only reason I'm even close to that is because the influx of six stones that we've gotten this year. But we take a look at, at, at a champion like Angela here, who's not a high prestige champ. And does depend on her SIG level. You know, I got her ranked up anyway because, well, I might as well. What else am I going to do with these resources? So I got her ranked up. But I can't use her in, like, Alliance Quest, for example. I would love to. I would love to replace my five-star champs, you know, in, like, the Caustic Temper node um, uh, that I've been running for years now. Just playing the same old champions every single day in, day out. I would love to replace those champs with my six-star Angela here. But I can't do it. Because she needs a higher SIG level for that. So, what do I do? Well, I could feed those SIGs to my 5-star. But then it's like, again, where is the progression in that, man? Like, I, I, I can't really... Like, there are some 6-star six cha six champs that I, I can use. And I try to rely on these champs as much as possible. But there's still so many champions that are like this. That I can't actually play them because I can't SIG them up. And I would love if there was something I can do where I can log in for the day and make some kind of progress, anything, any kind of progress towards it. But there's nothing. There's nothing that I can do to get Sig Stones to give to Angela. Those resources, they're committed elsewhere. The few times that we were given those resources. I so badly wish that that's what Incursions was, where, you know, we could use Sig levels as some sort of experience bar almost. Where, yeah, playing these champions allows you to, to, to grow them in power. Like, look at other games that aren't so heavily monetized, at least in, in that kind of way. They don't have microtransactions. Like Pokemon, for example, right? Similar concept. We're, we're, we're collecting 
uh, characters, trying to level them up to, to, to use them to, you know, defeat the next opponent, right? And you, you actually level up when you're playing with those Pokemon. Like, I, I, I wish so badly that the same thing can happen in MCOC, but it doesn't. It doesn't because you have to monetize that. And I understand, Kabam needs to make money, but that's, that's the reality of the situation. Is It's getting in the way of fun. That is, that is again, the state of the game currently. And then the six-star champions, even if we can get them ranked up, Part of the reason that it feels like such a crawl is that it doesn't even feel like I need these champs at rank 3. It's 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 a luxury thing in the first place, right? Like it, it, it six star champions, they really remind me of an old Simpsons episode where they got rid of the green light at traffic lights. You know, I have the, the red, yellow and green lights. Well, they got rid of the green lights and the joke was, "Hey, everyone goes faster when they see the yellow light because no one wants to get caught at the red light." So let's just do away with the green light, right? And then they cut to Lenny and, uh, you know, he's driving along. He sees the yellow light and he's, he floors it. He's like, oh man, I don't want to, please don't turn red. Don't turn red. And he makes it through and he's like, yes, I'm making record time. If only I had some place to be. And that's what six star champions feels like. It's like, okay, even if I do get these champs ranked up, which would feel good because, hey, at least it, it moves me along in that sense of progression. I don't have much of a use for the six-star champs in the first place. They matter in competitive modes like Alliance War, but a lot of players don't even play Alliance War because of all the other issues that I brought up previously. They matter for prestige, so even if you're not actually playing the champion, uh, you have to have them in your roster for, for prestige, which I don't even have a problem with prestige. It's just, um, I, you know, I, uh, that's, I have to focus on that first before actually feeding six to other champs. So it's important, still important to, uh, to talk about, but these, these are, these are just like bonuses. These are the cherries on top. You know, I accident I accidentally brought my five-star version of doom to war once and it didn't even matter. <laughs> I couldn't even tell the difference. Dude, so OP, it, it, it didn't even really matter. And I totally understand why there's not that big of a difference between five and six star champions. Because if you kept just like doubling their power level every time you ranked up a champion, the game would quickly spiral out of control. But it has gotten to that point. It's It's been here for the past three years where it is such a small difference in power level that it does make the progression feel like it is crawling and what I think needs to be done is some of the emphasis needs to be taken away from our roster and put into other areas of the game. Now, there, there already does exist progression in other forms outside of a roster. It's just the roster, it is, it's the biggest. And it should always be the, the biggest. It should always be the main focus, um, not only just from like a, a gameplay standpoint where it's fun to collect the new champs and get them ranked up, but for Kabam, I get it. That's how. That's what you guys make your money on is selling the new characters that re that are released every month, right? So I totally get that. But I'm gonna go back to Pokemon for another example here, only because there are some similarities between the two games. In each game, you know, Pokemon and MCOC, we're collecting hundreds of characters, <clears throat> ranking them up, fighting with them, and there's a pretty big difference, though. I would say in the two, where let's think about the Pokemon theme song for a second. Dude, right off the bat, it says, I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. When, you, when you're playing Pokemon, you kind of have this, this clear-cut goal of collecting these gym badges, taking on the Elite Four, you know what I mean? Like, you have, you have progression as a Pokemon trainer, along with that progression of, you know, your roster. Um, in MCOC... I think we need a greater emphasis on the progression of the summoner, of, of us, right? Like looking at this profile, there's no visual rep representation of the, the player, but like we're, we're here. This is, this is it, man. When you look at someone's profile, you're looking at another player and there's not enough here. There's not enough that, that changes, that has changed over the years to give us a sense of progression from the summoner standpoint so that's what needs to be focused on man um because again the, the the roster progression it is gonna feel like it's crawling at times sometimes you'll you know you'll make like a big upgrade or something like that but for the most part it's going to continue to crawl and it can't we need a greater sense of progression um 
I want to feel like I'm, I'm, I'm working towards something rather than just running in place, rather than just running on a treadmill, a treadmill that, you know, is seeing some low quality updates to it, a, a treadmill that's not really changing too much. So you're watching your buddies like that. That's what's kind of keeping you on is that you're running alongside your friends and your alliance mates and things like that. But then you see one hop off. And it creates this domino effect where, oh man, someone's friend quit the game. Now they're going to quit the game. Now their friend's going to quit the game. And every single person that hops off of this treadmill that we're currently on just makes it that much more, you know, makes you question that much more of like, well, when's a good time for me to hop off? You know, I, I need this greater sense of progression to come back to MCOC because it felt really good when I was playing, you know, Finkeldink or McFabi or Unzo, those accounts. But it's a night and day difference between a new account progression and where I've been stuck the past few years. Uh, so like I said, a way to accomplish that, update the profiles. Let's talk about all the changes to the profiles that we've seen since the six years that I've been playing this game. We've got the Alliance War MVP stat. Awesome. Wow, a big change. Doesn't really do anything. Cool. Um, hey, we can edit the Alliance champions. I don't think you could even see this on other, play uh, other players' profiles unless you're in the Alliance. And... Um, from my experience uh, as an alliance, we have not really used that feature whatsoever. Uh, there's prestige, which, hey, that was a hidden stat, but they added that to the profile, so that's cool. Uh, they added a, an advertisement for the summoner sigil. Okay. Uh, you could change your title, which, hey, the story progression titles, they've been great. But we need to see uh, uh, more development in, in that kind of thing. Um, or just different types of summoner progression than story progression titles, because, of course, you can't just roll one of those out every month. Uh, you can change your title, you can change your profile picture. Those things are different from the, the six years ago that I downloaded the game. Um, their Alliance War Seasons wasn't always a thing, but you know at some point they added that as well, uh, and a little icon for that, and that's cool. So, like, all the things that have been changed to... What I feel like is the greatest representation of us as players. All those little things, they've, they've been so minor. And it just, it kind of blows my mind that more has not been done. For example, with Summer of Pain, there should have been some sort of badge that got earned. Or just some way to show that off. Even if you're not trying to brag to someone else. Even if you're not comparing your profile to someone else's. Just to look back on yourself and, you know, fill up some of this empty space and be like, oh, man, uh, yeah, I remember doing that quest. That was so cool, man. Or, hey, if you didn't complete that quest, uh, all right, well, I'm going to get the next one. You know, Summer of Pain, I couldn't do all the objectives in 2021. 2022, though, I'm going to knock it out. That motivation to keep going, that sense of progression as a summer, like, we need that. We need that in the game because the roster... It's, it's, it's not enough. The way that it's crawling along, it's it's not enough. And you know what? I hate to do this, but since we're looking at the champions here, I, I have to talk about the balance of these champions and how out of control it is. And it's just, it gives me that feeling again, like I mentioned before, where it, I don't want to blame any individual developer. It feels like they're drowning in trying to, you know, sp spread their time too thin to try to cover everything that they're doing because so many champions are being released and updated and all that stuff. And it's just, we, we see some champs that, that, that are getting these updates that are just grossly overpowered, like King Groot here. And some people are going to question this and be like, dude, what are you talking about? Shut up, man. You're trying to get a champion nerfed? First off, Kabam is not going to nerf champs. They never nerf champs. Uh, and that is a problem. Uh, it's a problem when not enough time is being given to the champ to appropriately balance them. Uh, and then just having no way to alter them going forward. Um... King Groot, he already had some of the best healing in the game. Uh, you know, we're seeing other champs that are coming out with crazy healing too, like Diablo. And it, if if it was just these champions trapped in a little bubble that didn't affect the rest of the contest, okay, fine. But it does affect the rest of the contest. That is the problem. It has this rippling effect on the rest of the game. So, you know, when you see how powerful King Groot's healing is, and as a developer, Kabam is thinking like, okay, we still have to challenge players though. So how can we challenge players? Well, we're going to have to find a way to cut off some of this crazy healing that we've now given uh, two players. So let's add heal block everywhere. And then heal block, that affects the champions that are not overpowered. Maybe they just have a moderate heal to them. 
And suddenly those champs are being affected. Suddenly the, the, the masteries that you're running are being affected by this. Um, in war, we, we, we see that, you know, with that true focus node that's been in war, in Summer of Pain, in the Shang-Chi Challenge, that's just getting thrown all around, that, yeah, it seems like it was very much so there to target a, a champion like Quake, but it's affecting these other champions that were not overpowered. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's fun playing with an overpowered champion, but not only does it affect the other areas of the game, but the champions, they're really competing against themselves for our attention. It feels funny to think about it that way because they're not actually alive. But that's really what's going on. Is they're, they're Every champion competes with the other champions for our attention. So we see an OP champion like this get either you know released or buffed or something. And then we're comparing it to the newly released champs. The champs that we are going to forget about because they're on the opposite end of the poor balance, uh, poorly balanced spectrum where, yeah, more attention needed to be put into that champion to appropriately bring up their power levels. And then you've got players out here who are excited to see these champs released to the game, so excited that they're going to pick up an early access bundle, and damn, they actually got lucky, got the champion, only to be disappointed, only to be let down, and... That champion is is not really a champ worth playing. So yeah, champion balance too. It's all over the place. And again, I, I, I'm not blaming the champion designers or anyone involved in the process of balancing the champions. It just feels like there's these deadlines that Kabam they're trying to hit, and they're just they just don't have enough time to hit them. So I'm not you know not trying to make an excuse for them. Like, uh, it's just, I don't want to blame the individual developers. This is on Kabam as a company, as a studio, to figure out some kind of solution to this. And they made the call to, you know, at least reduce the number of reworks, um, you know, from three to two. But, you know, from my perspective, it seems like that's a call that should have been made months ago. So it makes me wonder, like, why wasn't that call made? You know, there's a lot more that I can say that I personally have issues with in the current state of the game, but this video is already getting to be very long, and I want to give an opportunity. I want to echo kind of, you know, some of your guys' thoughts on the matter. So let's go back to that Twitter post now. And like I said, I've organized sort of a top 10 list of the things that I saw the most, and I'm not going to put it in any particular order, because uh, I've also tried to group things that were kind of close if people just worded things slightly differently, you know. Um, so we'll go through the top 10 and then I'm just going to speed through like a bunch of other suggestions that I saw. Not everything uh, I'm going to read here I completely agree with, but these are some of the things that you guys wanted to see. So let's go through it. Uh, starting with the top 10 in no particular order though. Um, one of the things was to make it easier to swap masteries and revamp lesser used masteries. Uh, number two, solo incursions. Number three, more ISO from duping five and six stars or just increase ISO gains in some other way, glory store or something like that. Uh, number four, remove the help button. Saw that one a lot. Number five, make it easier slash cheaper to obtain new champions. Number six, more content outside of arena to do with lower star levels. This one kind of surprised me, but I saw this a lot. Kind of that same feel that we had from, you know, Variant 4, where people want to use some of their lower star level champs outside of the arena. Number seven was the practice room or revamped dual system. Uh, number eight, wish crystals. Number nine was fix the bugs. Even though I put this here, I still saw that a lot. Uh, and number 10 was just more events like the Summer of Pain. So those were some of the most commonly requested things. I'm going to go through and just kind of speed through some of the other uh, things that you guys mentioned, though. One was, was more gold, which I saw less than the ISO request, but still a decent number of people asking for gold. Uh, raids, which is something Kabam announced, but we haven't really gotten much for details on that. Uh, ban the cheaters. Um, Karina's challenges for other progression titles, uh, war revamp, champion trials, like our individual champions to put them through trials, um, profile customization, not just profile pictures and titles, uh, champion cosmetics, this game is too hard, followed by this game is too easy, saw both of those, uh, make it easier to get items back when the game bugs out, uh, max sig crystals for six stars that are ready sig 200 and you pull them out of a crystal. 
uh, a synergy slot in Alliance Quest, uh, make restarting quests refund energy spent, uh, either extend level cap or pseudo level ups at 60, uh, Thronebreaker monthly event quest with better rewards than Cav, tier 2 alpha or tier 5 basic arenas, energy refills for AQ or AW, percentage based potions or potion just to be buffed uh, in general, uh, solo competitive mode, which again, Kabam has already announced that. We're just lacking the details on it so far. Uh, make the game less time consuming. More control over RNG. For example, more selectors for class catalysts. More control over which specials you get to use, like using a special one even with two bars of power. Uh, better rewards for players not in alliances. Uh, more fun alliance activities. Uh, an option to skip to bosses in already completed quests just for fun. Uh, more frequent Everest-style content. It has been a while since we got the Abyss, after all. Uh, and finally, last but not least, uh, this one's my favorite. We're going to pop on over to, uh, to TJ here. Shout out to TJ, who said, Ban accounts for murking and give me Herc. <laughs> TJ, um... Unfortunately, just barely missed the uh, the cutoff in the Hercules arena. So, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. So, those were some of the, like I said, over 200 replies that I got on Twitter, which I know for a fact Kabam read those replies as well. So, um, thank you all for sharing those. Um, in addition to those things that I read off, there's a lot more that could be talked about in this video. So... Share your guys' thoughts in the comments. You know, they, they read the tweets. Uh, I have to believe that they will also read some of the comments on this video to see if you guys agree with the things I say. Maybe you disagree with the things I say. You could put that in the comments too, man. Just put exactly how you feel uh, in the comments. So, yeah, man. That'll do it for this very long video. Thank you all for uh, sticking uh, with me all this time. And, uh, yeah, let's talk about some of the stuff during the live streams as well. All right. Thank you all again for watching. See you in the next video. Take care.